Yeah, I mean, the only reason you can tell this is North Pole is because it says North Pole over the stage. Mini Moose originally wasn't supposed to have a mouth. Uh, he, the mouth was put in very late in revisions. Ah, oh, the show. Just the revisions and boards and everything that went on. Really not an enjoyable show to work on. This episode, I mean. It's kind of funny. The Koreans ignored a lot of the timing that uh, was put down in this, uh, this half of this episode. I was trying to do some very unconventional timing, and they, they, I think they freaked out. They didn't think that it was, they thought it was a mistake, I think, and then they, they reverted, they tried to do things a little bit more conventionally, so we had to edit, edit up and down to sort of snap things up. Again, the slow motion scene. Like, they're very stylized, that snap into pose stuff. Uh, that was originally what was asked for from Korea, but they actually, when it came back, it was animated. They actually had it animated between each pose. It was very smooth. Zim was just waving his arms, walking around the stage. Never had enough time for that whole area of Zim getting stuck in the Santa suit and, you know, sort of lamenting his fate. Really should have been long and drawn out. It should have been a much darker background, too. I, didn't, I never saw the color until I saw the final final footage come back. The robot here was designed after Giant Robo, I believe. Um, very Giant Robo-ish design. You know, uh, Japanese anime. This was all done by Chris Graham, this whole battle. And he really liked Giant Robo. So I forget if he even designed the robot. Did a preliminary design. But Robo always had those, uh, those two shoulder canisters, you know, that they flip over and fire missiles out of. And they can actually become giant missiles themselves and launch off. That's Ian Graham, <laughs> welcoming death because he's just so fed up with working in Zim. Spent so much time and energy, just wants to die. <laughs> uh, and then later on here we get a cameo, basically, of the entire crew. Nice little sequence. It's good to see how everything works. You know, and watch this interesting mecha play. A little bit simple, though, the design of this robot, and that's just horrible. Those missiles are horribly drawn. <laughs> Look at this. I think they're using that as the promo art for the show. It's just Santa bleeding in the snow. <laughs> that's kind of silly there. It's like, where did everything go? How did it end up so small? It swallowed all those Christmas trees, but then we never see where those trees go. It's just the suit, suit kind of just shrinks. Captain Claw. There goes the crew. So you can see, like, pretty much everybody got a cameo on the show is in there. And there I am with Jonah and with Rob Hummel next to us. Got up there in the upper right. The upper left always looked like Hitler to me. Hitler's hanging out watching Zim. It's kind of funny how cinematic this show was. Uh, the whole of Invader Zim, uh, with the blurs and the, the compositions and the perspectives and all. It's funny, it really didn't catch on at all. As far as I can tell, you know, as of 2002, nobody in the industry wants to do anything like this. We're sort of adrift. Uh, you know, I don't know if we'll ever do anything like this show again. Everybody seems to hate you know, what we did with this show. It doesn't seem to be very well received. Oh, well. It was a good experiment. A lot of art kids like the show, though. They like what we did. They'll probably be the ones giving us jobs in the future, you know? So, <laughs> so I'm fine with it. That was good. I could prove, you know, we could prove with the series. I could especially, you know, that this could be done and we can make something special. We could do something that's unconventional.